Brothers and sisters, in a few moments, I'm going to tell you what I believe was my greatest day as a da'i. Of the many things that our Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, was, he was also a da'i he invited to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Before I tell you about that day, I want to make sure you understand this premise and make sure you understand it very well. No one can believe except by the permission of Allah. You cannot guide those whom you love, but Allah guides to the straight path whomsoever he wills. Many of you parents have come here at this conference. Some of you have dragged your children when they didn't want to come. I was leaving a session yesterday and a mother told me, Imam, I was bringing my child to a session and they didn't want to go. And she made them go. And then she told me that after the child got at the session, the child didn't want to leave. And I felt great about that. I felt great about this conference. I was hoping that there's some meaningful things that would happen as a result of the conference. Those of us who have children know how challenging it is to keep your children into the faith of Islam. In New York City, there's an imam I know who have a number of children. He said to me one day years ago, he said, Imam, I've come to the conclusion that if only one of my child be Muslim, then I'll be happy. It was sad to hear that. You know, inviting people to Islam, you never know what Allah do. Thursday, we sitting in our masjid right before Salatul Dhuhr, a young man, 26 years old, comes into the masjid, he wants to become Muslim. How much do you know about Islam? Not much. One day before that Wednesday, a young sister, a woman from Haiti, want to become Muslim. We didn't do anything. And then on the other hand, we have children, daughters and sons that we would love for them to, to be Muslim again, to pray again, to wear hijab again. And no matter what we say, it seems that they go further and further away. As I travel around the country and around the world, people say, Imam Siraj, what can I do to my child? My child has left Islam. I want to share with you what was my greatest day as a da'i, recognizing that it came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. About 10 years ago, about this time, a few days before Easter, Texas State University and San Marcos, the Muslim Student Association had a program, invited Imam Siraj to be their speaker. And the topic was, what did Jesus really say? This place was in the Bible Belt, deep in the South. And this place, the auditorium was large, about 400 seats. Every seat was taken. Even the people that sat in the aisles, they stood in the back, even the door was open and the people couldn't get in. And there were so many people that some of the people sat on the stage. And I told them, I was introduced by a, a professor at the university. And before he introduced me, he said to me, Imam Saraj, I want to let you know 
that at some point, many of these students have a class, so they will get up and they will walk out of your sermon and your lecture. I don't want you to think it's you, it's not you, but they have to go to some other class. I'm just giving you the heads up. He said, I said, okay. He invited me. The first thing I told the students is that I'm not going to give a lecture about what did Jesus really say. Rather, I'm going to give a lecture about Jesus from an Islamic perspective. What does Muslims say about Jesus? How do we feel about Jesus, peace and blessing be upon him? And the reason that I did that is that when you make the title, what did Jesus really say, you are implying to them that they don't really know. So they become defensive right from the very beginning. Jesus from an Islamic perspective. I'll tell you this. We gave the lecture. I'm expecting students to get up, to walk out. Not one student left. And when the lecture was over, I said, it's time for us to pray. We're going to be gone about 10 minutes, and we'll be back for questions and answers. And I expected one-third of the audience to leave. When we came back, no one left their seat. And then we had a question and answer period. And during the question and answer period, there was a young man, a, a senior, named Daniel Ryder, sitting to my left. He asked a number of questions, but his questions weren't challenging me, or Islam, or the Quran, or the Hadith. He was asking questions to get more and more about Islam. This young man, Daniel Ryder, was the president of the Christian Association on campus. When the question and answer period was over, he came to me privately, and we began to discuss more of the issue about Jesus and Islamic position. Brothers and sisters, of all my life of giving dawah, if I had ever been so sure that a person would take shahada, to me, that young man, Daniel Readers, took Shahada that night in his heart. That's how I felt. And I'm telling you, I fell in love with him. Fast forward. Two months later, I get a letter from this young boy's mother, Mrs. Ryder. She said, Imam Saraj, you don't know me, but I am the mother of Daniel Readers. I want to let you know that you had a profound effect on him. The reason that I got your address is that you gave him your card and his card was in his wallet and I saw your card in his wallet. I just wanted you to know that my son Daniel Riders was in a car accident and he died. But I want to let you know that his brothers was in the car with him and all of them were fine. And I just thought that it was important for you to know the profound effect that you had on my son. Why I say all of this? Sometimes, brothers and sisters, you can talk and you can preach. You can give every ayat of the Quran. You can give it every hadith. But there is no guarantee that a person is going to accept Islam. There's no guarantee that your children will stay into Islam. All I can say is this, speakers before us, Dr. Yunus, Sheikh Mukhtar, and all the others, there are two components of dawah as I see it. I'm going to ask a question. I want you to help me. I'm going to name some prophets because the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, said, Prophets, all of them were brothers. Their mothers are different, but their religion is one. One religion. We're the only religion that teaches us to believe in all the prophets. There are some people who believe in Jesus, but don't, who believe in Moses, but don't believe in Jesus. 
There are some people who believe in Moses and Jesus, but they don't believe in Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him. But Muslims, we are those who believe in every prophet. I want to ask you a question. Do you know any Muslim who have the name Zachariah? Raise your hand. Good, look around. Do you know any Muslim that have the name Musa? Raise your hand. If you know any Muslim that have the name Isa, Dawood, Suleiman, Yusuf, Yunus, Ayub. Notice about these prophets. Tell me something about these prophets. Every one of them, children of Israel, yet we wear their names. There was a man, a Christian, had the name Muhammad. And he told his pastor that so many people made fun of him because he had the name Muhammad. And the preacher told him, you should change your name. And he changed his name from Muhammad to some other name. But we as Muslims, we honor and respect those prophets. How many of you, like me, were converted or reverted to Islam? Raise your hand. Okay. All of you who converted to Islam, like me, you see these folks here who were born Muslims? You see all those who were born Muslims? You and I who were converted, we got something they ain't got. Why you, why? let me tell you why. Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Whoever believes in Jesus and then believes in me will have a double reward. Ha! Because and these are the same things that I said at that university. Because we believe in all the prophets. Two things we have to do. Number one, know our religion. These non-Muslims don't look down upon them. You are here to help them, to guide them. Stop looking down on them. Stop judging them. They live the way they live because they don't have the guidance. As the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said that Allah said, Ya ibadi, kulukun dalun illa man hadaytu fastahduni ahdikum. Oh my slaves, every one of you are misguided unless I guide you. Therefore, ask me and I will guide you. You're only guided by Allah's permission. Allah guided you and you should be happy. And if Allah hasn't guided other people, then you should do your best to help and guide them to Islam. How are you going to do it? Two ways. We got to know our religion and how we treat them, how we look at them. I have done, brothers and sisters, most of my dawah or a lot of my dawah in airports and in planes. If you don't want dawah, don't sit next to me in the plane. Because I'm going to talk to you. I remember we had landed in some city and everybody was getting up and they were getting off the plane and I was sitting in the back and I noticed an old white woman who was sitting there and she seemed to need some help. I came to her and said, Madam, do you need help? She said, yes, my luggage, my overhead luggage. So I reached up and got her luggage, an old white woman. I said, would you like for me to take it off the plane for you? She said, no, no, I'm good. I said, good. I walked off the plane, and a young white woman said to me, she said, sir, I saw what you did. I want to thank you. People are watching you. People will make judgments by what you do as a Muslim. And by the way, by the way, when I got the lady's uh, luggage, the old lady's luggage, I didn't say, put your finger up, 
Say, La ilaha illallah. No, I don't do it for her to take shahada. I do that because who we are. I'm sitting in the airport in Atlanta, Georgia, and we're sitting at our gate on my way to Tennessee. And to my left was an old white man, and he was coughing, and he had a nasty cough. He was coughing. He had a nasty cough. It just so happened I had the best uh, cough drops in the world made out of honey. And I had two packs. I took out one of the packs. I said, sir, here, this will help you. He said, thank you. And he went in his pocket, said, how much? I said, no. He took the one drop. And he put it in his mouth, immediately he stopped coughing. He looked at me and said, and everybody there was happy because we didn't hear that nasty cough. But that's who we are. That's how Muslims are. This is what we are. This is what we do. So therefore, like everybody else have said, how are you? How you act with people? How do, they, how do they know who you are? Most Americans, many Americans, will never read one ayat of Quran, may never see one hadith, but they see millions of Muslims, their neighbors, their doctors, their school teachers, their, you know, everybody around them. And so, how Muslims show themselves. And number two, learning about our religion, how we treat one another, and then learning what Islam says about the prophets that came before. Brothers and sisters, I'm going to make a dua for you. You know, I'm a, reg a, a very regular guy. I, I don't think that my supplication is better than yours. I, honestly, I don't think that, you know, yeah, you know, I'm Imam Suraj. You know, I got a special relationship with Allah. No, no, I don't believe that. But I do believe this. Uh, Allah said, Call out a bukum udu uni estajiblukum. Your Lord said, Call upon me, I will answer. Therefore, whenever people ask me to make dua, Imam, could you make dua for me? I do it. I was in Dallas, Texas about a month ago, and uh, I was at a terminal and I had to go to another terminal, so I'm waiting outside for a cab. So a cab pulls up and said, You need help? I said, Yes. He said, Get in the car. So we drove to the terminal. He said, oh, you Muslim? I said, yes, assalamu alaikum. He says, he's a Muslim too from Saudi Arabia. He don't know me, he don't know Imam Siraj. When I was about to get off, he said, you know, brother, I want you to make dua for me. Me and my wife have been married for years and we don't have any children. Make dua that we would have children. I don't know. I made dua for him and his wife maybe three weeks straight every day. I don't even know him. Never saw him in my life. But he asked me to make dua. I'm coming from Malaysia. I, I, I uh, land in the JFK. A cab driver picks me up. He don't speak to me the whole drive, drive home. And, and I'm about to get out of the car the cab, and he said, are you Muslim? I said, yes, of course I'm Muslim. He said, I am too. My wife has cancer. Please make dua. And I did. And I've been making dua. Because this is who we are. We are brothers and sisters. We can at least make dua. How many of us even make dua? I was in Washington, D.C. on a program years ago. And the program was almost over, and a young brother said to me, Ma'am Saraj, there's a, uh, a brother in the hospital, and please, can you make dua for him? I said, how far is the hospital? He said, so-and-so distance. I said, let's go. So he drove me to the hospital. I got into the room, and he said to the brother, he says, Imam Saraj is here to see you. He said, no, he's not. He said, yeah, he really is. He said, no, stop lying. And I said, Assalamu alaikum. If you could have seen his face, Imam Saraj came to visit me in the hospital. Little stuff. My dua is for all of you, your children. May Allah bless your children to stay in the deen. Those who left the deen to come back. Maybe Allah hears our dua. 
Allahumma inni a'udhubukam min da'watan la yastujabu laha. The Prophet said, Oh Allah, I seek refuge with you from a supplication that's not answered. I know you. I've known you for years. I, I don't know you personally, but I know your biggest concern when I travel is my children. My children have left the deen. My children. How often do we think about it? Maybe you couldn't bring them here at the conference. Maybe you did. Maybe they didn't attend any conference. Maybe they stayed in the hotel room. Maybe they watched TV the whole conference. I don't know. But I pray to Allah in some way, in some great way, Allah will intervene, realizing Makanli Nefsan and Tukmina Ila Bi No one can believe except by Allah's permission. Oh Allah, help my children to come back to the faith of Islam. May Allah bless you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.